तो भाइयों और बहनों सब्सक्राइब मारो सो so गाइस मेरा नाम है प्रियेश आप तो जानते ही हो तो आज वाली वीडियो में बेसिकली व्हाट वी आर गोना डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू डू अ पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द लेसन नंबर फाइव टूवर्ड्स ग्रीन एनर्जी सो इफ यू हैवन वॉच पार्ट वन और पार्ट टू येट द लिंक्स विल बी गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो डू वॉच इट सो फॉर नाउ लेट्स बिगिन विद पार्ट थ्री सो नाउ लेट्स सी हाउ न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट वर्क Nuclear power plants are thermal power stations which generate electrical energy from heat. They consist of numerous buildings and facilities, the most important of which are as follows. The turbine building houses several turbines as well as the generator necessary for electrical power generation. The containment building where the nuclear reactor is housed is made of meter thick reinforced concrete inside this building nuclear reactions take place where water is heated up the cooling tower which can be as tall as 200 meters is where hot water is cooled in order to easily understand the underlying principles the following is a description of the most important components of a nuclear power plant that uses a pressurized water reactor pwr In the reactor pressure vessel the nuclear reaction and the associated release of thermal energy takes place. In a pressurized water reactor as in this case the reactor pressure vessel stands about 12 meters tall. The walls are about 25 cm thick. Inside is where the fuel assemblies can be found. In pressurized water reactors about 150 such assemblies are installed. A single fuel assembly is composed of many fuel rods. A fuel rod is about 5 meters in length and has a diameter of about 23 cm. The actual nuclear fuel is found inside of each fuel rod. Small nuclear fuel pellets composed of enriched uranium or plutonium make nuclear fission chain reaction possible. In the fission chain reaction, thermal energy is released. Water is needed in order to absorb the thermal energy and keep the chain reaction going. Inside the vessel, the water is heated to over 570 degrees Fahrenheit. The water does not boil, however, since the pressurizer maintains the water pressure constant at around 160 bars. The heated water is eventually pumped to a heat exchanger, also called steam generator. These are typically in the form of a shell and tube heat exchanger. Hot water flows through the U-tubes, heating up the metal of the pipes so that any water inside the heat exchanger begins to boil. The resulting steam is eventually fed through a set of pipes to the turbine building. The steam first drives a high pressure turbine and then is typically fed to two low pressure turbines. All of the turbines are connected by a spinning shaft to the electrical generator, which in turn produces AC electricity from the shaft's rotational energy. The steam is converted again into liquid form in a condenser and then returned back to the steam generator. The water needed for this often comes from an adjacent river or is cooled in a cooling tower. 
The water circulation systems are always kept separate from one another. Water in the primary circulation system never leaves the containment building. This water is radioactive, since it has been in direct contact with the fuel rods. Water in the secondary circulation system is used to drive the turbines and is not radioactive. The cooling circulation system provides cool water and is used to condense the steam in the secondary circulation system. So now, let's see natural gas power plant. Hi, I'm Lacey Lett and today I'd like to talk to you about natural gas power plants. Many Americans use natural gas for heating their homes and cooking their food. But, did you know that gas also produces about 30% of our electricity? And that percentage is expected to grow because natural gas has become the number one choice for large new power plants in the United States. So how do these natural gas plants work? Well, they work much like the spinning turbine of a powerful jet engine. Burning natural gas at the power plant heats up the air needed to spin the hundreds of propeller-like blades in the turbine. The turbine is connected by a shaft to a generator that makes an electric current. By spinning magnets through a wire coil, it converts the mechanical energy of the turbine into electricity. That's why it's called a generator. This type of power plant is called a simple cycle gas turbine because, well, it's pretty simple. There's only one turbine and one generator. There's also a second type of natural gas plant called a combined cycle power plant. It combines a gas turbine and a steam turbine used in a coal power plant. But instead of using coal or even more gas to create steam, a combined cycle plant uses the exhaust heat from the gas turbine to boil water into steam. The steam then drives a second turbine, which spins a second generator, producing even more electricity. This two-step combined cycle process is highly efficient, converting as much as 50% of the energy contained in natural gas into electricity. In comparison, coal-fired steam turbines are only about 33% efficient. And this is one of the main reasons why gas-fired power plants are better for the environment. Natural gas starts out with a lower carbon content than coal, and with more efficient power plants, it can produce electricity with about 60% less carbon dioxide than coal-fired power plants. Also, natural gas plants do not release many of the toxic substances like mercury that comes from burning coal. Modern natural gas plants can get going in just 15 minutes. That makes them ideal for backing up renewables, since they can switch on and off faster than most other conventional plants and partner with wind and solar energy as the wind changes or clouds move across the sky. Besides helping the environment, natural gas plants also make financial sense. According to the United States Energy Information Administration, when you consider the construction and fuel costs, natural gas plants are the cheapest kind of new power generation you can build right now. So, from efficiency to affordability to helping the environment, it's easy to see why natural gas is playing a bigger role in supplying our electricity needs. So guys, part 4 of this video will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that and subscribe my channel.